And without further ado, let me bring out the cast of power, Omari Hardwick, Leela Lauren, Naturi Naughton, and Joseph Sakura. And here they are. Hey. Here they are. <laughs> Take, we're taking in you guys, so let us. Oh, we're, gonna, we're just gonna stare at y'all for a minute. These are like the super, super, like serious fans, right? Well, and it's oh, yes. look at it. <laughs> That's crush lover. So don't do it this time. Thank you for being here. <laughs> don't do it this time. Okay, so. I won't. I won't. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> See? Oh my goodness. Whatever. Serious, serious. <laughs> Where are the serious fans again? Are there any? Hey, you guys see it. I see it. Oh, I love this. We you should guys take them have on the road with Any us. Team Holly's Holly's here? moment. Any Team Holly? Because Joseph, we just right came here. from team dinner. Holly, right here. We all had team cocktails. Holly. I don't know. Okay, well, let's get to it. Let's get to it so we can get to the audience questions, get your questions in your head, because we're going to come to you. And you will get to ask these fine people some questions yourself. But I'm going to get started. And I told you I'm trying to focus. Journalist, not fan. Journalist, not fan. Okay. So, Amari, let me start with you. Um, the theme this season is Ghost Must Die. No. <laughs> so tell us what we can expect. Um, because, you know, that season finale for season two was crazy, right? So many twists and turns. Absolutely. You know, Ghost pretty much did what he had to do to get himself out of the drug game. So yeah. he thinks he secured his clubs. Um, and he killed Kanan, maybe. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, so season can... three, I know you can't give us too many details, but, but where is Ghost when we, we start things off on Sunday? So I think um, Leela keeps saying that there's a, uh, a line drawn in the sand that for her character, she doesn't necessarily want to cross or allow him to cross. Right. Yeah, it's um, a non-negotiable. <laughs> Naturi has a line in the sand which is called, I married you, Negro, so you have to remain. Exactly. You made a commitment. I'm your wife. Married right. to me. And, and we got and, kids. And Joseph's character um, in the bromance of the show has a line which is, we made a contract when we were 10 years of age. Right. And so where he is by season three is, all of those people, um, Leela's character, Angela included, are dealing with Ghost. And Ghost has made these promises. Ghost has made a promise to this one to get rid of Ghost. He's made a promise to uh, Tasha, his wife, to figure out how to keep the family together, yet amicably part, which doesn't necessarily make sense. And he's made a commitment in the first season to the second season to Joe um, and Tommy to be his ride or die, to mm. be his guy, you know, and um, and to be more of what he needs than what Holly can be to him. So when you introduce yourselves to Ghost this season, he's mostly Jamie. And the problem, Jackie, is that Jamie doesn't possess the skill set that crazy ass Ghost needs. Right. So um, he's in the beginning of season three, you're dealing with a man who is highly confused. And what I think we've all loved about Ghost is that he's so calm, cool, and collected. Yes. He's so calculated and he so thinks way ahead of the curve that it's a character that almost is heroic in a sense with quotations around it. But in season three, he's unraveling and, and we're having to deal with the vulnerability of a man who I think, um, and my makeup artist was saying this today, she said it early on and it's true, women will always root for a broken man who's not weak. You don't want to cry, That's baby. That's true. Right. But you guys will root for a broken man. And so this season, we find him more broken than ever. Wow. OK. Good answer. Uh, Leela, let's talk about Angela. Sure. Her job is pretty much shot. Not really, not, I no. mean, well, you know, <laughs> not completely, but it's not mm -hmm. looking good. And uh, you know the man. Don't you underestimate love. her. <laughs> well, the man you love had a hand in that, or uh, the man Angela. See, I, I get it mixed up. The character. Well, you so, know so where her. Where we her... find Angela in in season three? Okay, so her job was in a very precarious position, and then he sent uh, Vibora away, like he he prevented. Um, Isabel from testifying, so he sort of saved her at the end of the day. And, he, and she snitched on Greg. Uh, and she, she turned the tables around on Greg, yeah. and so now he's sort of banished the way she was banished. So nobody believes him when he... Yeah, except that he met her in the dumpster, so she's having to deal with a whole other level of crazy that she caused. 
Um, and so the top of season two, she's finally getting what she wants. Jamie has come and promised her the ghost is dead and that if she'll have him, if she's willing to overlook the massive murders he's just committed. <laughs> <laughs> like, clean slate. Like, yeah. Kind of like when you try to eradicate bed bugs. Like, we're good now. We got new linen. <laughs> we're fine. Everything can proceed as normal. Start fresh. <laughs> Sorry, we've all had cocktails, if you can't tell. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> the top of season one, <laughs> Angela is like, whoop de doo I finally have the man that I love, except she's having to contend with the fact of her intuition. And this guy is like super vague, so whenever she asks him like a direct question, he always has to dance around He's it. He's ghost. That, yeah. hate yes. that doesn't inspire confidence. It's, it's like, men. you will see so <laughs> many scenes where you're like, dude, why couldn't you just F and answer right. the question the way I put it. Why do you got to do this thing? Um, so Angela is dealing with what she's invited into her house mm. and the ramifications that that will hold and whether or not she can trust him and where love exists within all of that. Mm. Okay. Mm. Natori. Yes. <laughs> Let's talk about Tasha. <laughs> <laughs> well, what okay. do you want to know? Well, she's <laughs> lost her man to his mistress, her lover, who she was just Lost using temporarily. anyway. Lost temporarily. Oh, that's what I want to add. Temporarily. But we'll get back to that, whether or not the love triangle is really over, right? Yeah, no, the love triangle, triangle never dies in, in, the, in the game of power. It's never over is a theme, but um, what were you gonna No, I was ask? gonna say, you know, so her lover is dead, you know, and she thinks her husband Oh yeah, my side piece, Your side piece, Which Sean. you were just using anyway. I mean, I'm still very upset about Sean. Played by a friend and amazing guy, Sinqua Walls. He passed away <laughs> passed by away. the hand of Kanan. Right. Oh, he got shot. Yes. Oh, yes. He got yeah. murdered by his own well, daddy. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Well, you don't know. You think ghosts Well, I don't know. I think ghosts killed Sean. Right. So to that. So you're just mad. I'm still, Tasha's I'm still, just pissed off. It goes down. Yeah, no, in the so DM. <laughs> Exactly. So okay. it, when we go into season three, yes. where is Tasha? Well, Tasha is really starting to find herself. For the first time in her life, she's independent of ghosts, essentially. Tasha has always been kind of defined by ghosts. What she wears, how she looks, you know, everything about her existence has been about pleasing ghosts. But this season, you're gonna see in season three, she's really discovering who she is as a woman, who she is with her children as a mother. Um, I think she's exploring single motherhood, which is scary for her. Um, I think that Tasha is also becoming more of a business gangster woman when she teams up with this guy right here, Tasha, Tommy, and Holly. Played by Lucy Walton. Holly. Yes, Holly. I know. I, I don't want to give too on. much away, but what I will say is that Tasha puts her smarts to you know to the test, and she starts utilizing her intellect without ghosts. So she realizes this season that she is just as powerful. She's just as gangster. She's just as badass such as, as such anybody as else, and such as smart. You know. So I think even though she doesn't have a, a sexy love interest. She still finds not beauty. Yet at least. Not yet, exactly. She still finds love, quality, and value to herself as a woman. And I think that's the most powerful exploration that a woman can have. And Tasha represents that finding who you are without your husband, without your man. She's coming into her own. Yes, I love that. I love that. And Thank last you. but definitely not least, Joseph. Yeah! <laughs> Tommy! <laughs> Joseph, yes, yes. you are betrayed by your bromance partner, Ghost. Mm. You know, um, Tommy is, and he's, you know, he's hurt by that, but your ride or die, Holly, is for some reason back. <laughs> She's bringing him back, right? For some reason. And you're listening to her again. I mean, Jackie, okay. you're going fan. You're going fan. Okay, Stay I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay, okay. You're right. You're right. You're right. Woo -woo, woo -woo. For some reason. So, so Joseph. Season three, where do we see Tommy going? Uh, can I just start off telling you, your earrings are beautiful. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. She's I appreciate beautiful. That. Yes. Um, secondly, so we find Joe, Tommy. You want to switch seats with me, brother? We find, uh, <laughs> he just threw me off. Okay. You know what? Since you're offering. <laughs> um, we find Tommy at the end. I mean, the extreme situation, he's been given an ultimatum by Lobos yeah. um, to say that he has to kill Ghost. 
So to Tommy, that means more than his own life, because as we know, Tommy's like, whatever, I'm going to die in this game anyway. I'm not afraid of death. But what I am afraid of is what I want of my family. The um, St. Patrick's were his family. And now that that bond has been broken, he's trying to set up his own family. As much as Ghost has now betrayed Tommy um, three times in terms of what he feels are significant lies to himself, Holly, which is uh, sending Kane into prison, um, killing the girl in, uh, uh, in pink Miami, sneakers. pink sneakers, and then also... Uh, Jackie's on it. <laughs> exactly. And then also the um, sending uh, Holly away. So inversely to that, Holly, in his mind, has proven herself to choose love over money and um, her, her man over freedom, which is really the two things that Ghost was offering her. Yeah. So Tommy said, all right, great, I got my ride or die, but what about this business? Um, he doesn't have the finesse and the savvy that Ghost does. He's an enforcer, and he's a connector, so he's known in the streets. I mean, if it was up to Tommy, he'd probably still be hugging the block, but he has to advance past that right. to, to make this business work in a corporate situation, which he's learned from Ghost. He's not Kanan. He's not going to win by bopping block to block. He, he's in a corporate um, um, atmosphere now that he's learned from Ghost. So how does he incorporate those two different themes into something that works and works for himself? And I think that we're going to see a real coming-of-age story for Tommy in season three. Yeah. You won't be disappointed. He fucking kills it the first three episodes. As generous. We all Ow. love each other. Wow. Okay. Talk. So let me ask you all this. And since Omari is the, is the poet here, if, if you all can't answer this, then we'll throw it to him to fill in the blank for you. So if Ghost must die, Angela must what? Mm. Learn to live within the confines of her love. Mm. Okay. Oh, wow. So if Ghost must die, Tasha must... Fly. Oh, if Ghost must die, <laughs> Tasha must... Thrive. thrive. Yeah, thrive. Mm. She must thrive. If Ghost must die, Tasha must thrive. That's awesome. So if Ghost must die, Tommy must... Take over. <laughs> <laughs> and scene. <laughs> and scene. All right, so take us a little bit deeper inside the minds of your characters. I don't know if you all do this as actors, but I hear a lot of actors do this. You kind of create more than what we... Like a story for your... A backstory for your character. Um, so... I have to ask this, um, Amari, about um, Jamie. Does he still love Tasha as we go into season three? Did he ever love Tasha? <laughs> you know what I mean? Did he ever love her? And does he love her or is he, he's not in love with her anymore, I'm thinking, but how deep is that love if he has any love left? Absolutely loves her, zero question. That's a great um, question. Jackie's doing good at oh, shit. Oh, you're like, we. Yeah. Absolutely loves her. And we were just talking about it today. The writing room, we, sh we should give credit to Courtney Kemp. The, yeah, the shout out to show. Courtney Kemp, our show yes. owner. And, and our she writes the incredible show. writers that she um, has manned. What, what, what we realize, Jackie, is that the writing is so good because as many rhetorical questions that are being asked by the 6.9 million, hopefully raising the bar of fanship at this point, we equally as cast members are constantly asking these questions. And so um, I have definitely, as Omari playing Ghost, had to ask the question um, and answered it definitively without any hesitation that he loves his wife. She, if in mindset for him, um, is at this point more of a, a, a baby's mama, if it was the vernacular of the street or the mother of his children, if not. Um, she is literally his wife and they're not divorced. And she's his wife for many reasons. And, uh, you know, Notori always astutely points out her character knows so many freaking secrets. She has, and. And I have helped protect his Protect man. secrets, and, yes. and she's hid guns, and she's done, and we've done our own backstory with the help of, of the writers in terms of that. But I feel like he absolutely loves her. I think um, there's questions at times that I ask myself about his level of narcissism and arrogance and hubris is so high that with Tasha what has happened is that he is believed to have brought her up in a way. And if he's thinking that almost in a George Michael a la father figure type of way, um, in terms of the song that George Michael made famous, he thinks that he's brought up in a way where he can kind of disrespect her at times, be of condescension when he speaks to her. but. He is never in question of his love for her. What I think at this point, going into season three, that he's questioning 
is is he in the is he in the idea and he's not in love with her at this point but he does love her but is he in the idea of being in love with a girl that he let go or that let go of him when they were 14 years of age and that being Angela I think that he is so alpha male that it's about the Romeo and Juliet concept of you cannot tell me what I can't have and I'll make it happen. And so I think if he ever figures out um, what he really feels about Angela's character, it'll make him more clear about what he feels about his wife. Right. Mm. And I think if he ever figures out what he feels about Angela's character, it will come parallel with him finally acquiring her and then at that moment being in his solitude somewhere, maybe next to Tommy, maybe not, but in solitude going, was it all worth it? Did I really want her or did I just want to win her? Mm -hmm. And so I think that's the right. question for him. Because mm -hmm. now he's got her. Yeah. Mm. Good. Could, could Ghost ever, if he had to, kill Angela? Ooh. Ooh. Nobody has ever asked that. I'm just one. I'm just I getting mean, inside Jackie's the mind. Just, I'm just, just getting inside the mind. Die. Well, I'm just trying to get inside what the mind. Did you come up with any questions? <laughs> could Ghost kill? What? Yeah. I'm just saying if he could. Sure. You know what? I, I, you know what's, I mean, what's I cool? Know. I mean, you know Ghost better than anybody. I'm I, just wondering I, if you I could do. go there. I mean, we created... Ghost is created by Joseph Shakura and Courtney Kemp and Omari Hardwick. The three of us created Ghost. It was our work together. Um, and a lot of help from, from Leela and Notori. A lot of help. But the three of us that I previously named created Ghost. So... I, I would feel more comfortable maybe um, so that I can keep playing him without judgment. Right. I would almost feel better if my castmates could answer if they felt like he could. And I see Joe thinking. Yes, I think he can <laughs> kill Angela. No, I'm Set, just... Says Tasha. What do you, says Tasha. What do you, what do you think? I, think, I think Ghost could kill anybody. Yeah, wow. ultimately. When he digs deep, he's he I don't think survival. he could kill Tommy. Or, or, I, or, no, I, I, I think right. the mother of his kids. He's, I don't I agree. I, no, but Angela's not that dream. So if he's ever done anything, you think he could oh, kill oh. anybody? He said Angela. He said Angela. I, no, I think even no, Tommy. I think, I think they. I think I truly think from right now. I'm looking at the genius bar sign. <laughs> it's working. genius. I, I think that ghost could. I think ghost could legitimize in his mind somehow if it served his purpose fully. What he thought it was his purpose at that time. I think he could kill anybody. So imagine how difficult. It's deep. L right? Listen to this, guys. Imagine how difficult, as a as a man who has elements of ghost, these ladies have elements of Angela and Tasha. That man has elements of Tommy, but we are not in totality those characters. So right. imagine me, who's very much a giver. You know me, Jackie. Mm -hmm. Very much selfless. Very much team oriented. Mm -hmm. um, I am so not like Ghost in that way. So imagine how difficult it is to play a character that these three that are that close to me believe is that sociopathic. Mm. He is a difficult guy to play, man. Yeah. Or when this season, super, when you said to difficult. me, Joe, you're like, man, I don't know what I'm, I feel like I'm, man, I don't know what I'm, fuck I'm, I'm, I'm lost. He's intimidating. And man. I said, you know, and I said, you know what? Yeah. Really? Ghost is lost. Yeah, I, I, there was Omari so I embodies guess, the character. I mean, he gives yeah. himself so fully into the character that he's just like, I just, I, am I doing an awful job here? Like they're calling. I, I feel like I don't even know what I'm doing. I said, Yeah, you're lost. Y'all so are, remember too, we're talking about identities. The, there's James, Jamie, and Ghost, and, and there's the first, always the trap. You're the yeah. first crowd that that's been revealed. We've never had, we've never said that. So, um, thank you, Jackie. You're, you're just bringing you know, out the best in us. We were at, we were at the beach. Somebody's Le gonna cry. Lila and Joe were, I mean, were not anywhere near that scene or deep. that day but Joe and I were shooting in Staten Island and and I've never I've always felt in control of Ghost enough but that day I, I literally broke down and I was in tears and I was like wow it's a hard character I said man he's killing me this guy's killing me and I'm lost and Joe said good you're supposed to be lost go with that yeah wow yeah you're living anybody it right else now. that connected to the to your characters they all are. I mean, all we're all connected. All yeah. I but think that's one of the reasons so why it works. I, I, yeah. 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 You know? yeah, I don't know. I mean, I've, are, I've I mean, are there pieces of Notori in Tasha? Ah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know yeah. if I want to answer that. I love that. the thought process. No, uh, I'm like, ah. Uh, 
<laughs> well, of course they are pieces the of Tasha. Like vulnerability. Okay, Curry. so yes, <laughs> there are pieces of Tasha that are within myself, Naturi. However, certain things that Tasha does, like masturbating in the back seat of the truck with the driver looking she in the really rear view mirror. Detail. Detail. I don't see you myself in the back seat? doing it and doing oh, you're it wild. That you've done it in the front seat? I don't see myself going there in the back seat and you <laughs> know manipulating seat. that poor young man. But um, I think that the strength and the very strong-willed, I guess, nature to survive. Tasha is a survivor. The first thing about this character when I read the script is that she will fight for the people she loves. She will go, she will go so hard that sometimes it hurts herself. I'm the same way. Sometimes I think when you look at family or love or relationships and marriage, you are just so in it to win it that sometimes you're blinded mm. by the truth. And Tasha is all about go, especially the first two seasons, now she's kind of seeing the light. But I think that Naturi is just as much ride or die, just as much passionate, just as much, you know, uh, just thrust, she just thrusts herself into love and survival. And I think both of them don't always work out the way she wants them to. So Criminal minded, you've been blinded. What? Yeah. <laughs> you know, she's Where's a the DJ? Well, Joseph, we got a little bit of understanding into why, at least I did, why Tommy, and you all probably would agree, I hope, Tommy is the way he is when we got to meet his mother. Yeah. Um, but I wonder, what is it about Tommy that makes him so open to Holly? Um, <laughs> this is not personal. <laughs> that like, makes him so open to, to Holly to the point that not, not only like um, do, does he, you know, love her so much but he listened like she he's influenced by her how does that happen i think that you mentioning the uh, mother i think is very important because i think that the mother has been able to manipulate tommy in an in a not dissimilar way i was also saying earlier in the day that i feel like holly to tommy because in my mind in our backstory as i you know really omari and i really did the majority of creating the, the backstory of course for Tommy and Tommy and Ghost and stuff. I mean, Tommy was just with black girls from the hood yeah. primarily. So like there is still something exotic about Holly. Mm. Okay. You know, it's like it's almost like, "Oh, wow." And then I, and, and, and she works at this club. I could get this. And she boy, she looks a little like well not that she looks like mom, but reminds me of mom somehow. weird. Yeah, so there's that, but there's all of these strange elements, and I think that it's one of those situations where, I mean, love truly is blind. We've all done such stupid things in love, and I think that he's fallen in love, and to see, I think that's a genius thing that Courtney did. You're watching a, a you know, a man in his 30s fall in love for the first time. Mm -hmm. But also, in real time. Yeah. Like, can I add in terms of acceptance? Of course, sure. Is that Tommy is critically aware of who he is. And Holly is a woman who accepts him wholly, and not only that, is turned on by who he is. When are you going to go like yeah. that? Who's yeah. that hot? Yeah, it's like two fire signs. I mean, yeah. it's dangerous, it's yeah. hot, it's, it's consuming, but it's... Not that it's healthy, good. but it works. It right, 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 right. Can I just ask about the dog? Who's... <laughs> dog about the dog. Like, you didn't, oh, you didn't watch that episode? Belle, my Wait, dog. Wait, did we... Well, we don't... Belle Belle you saw the... You saw the no. About yeah yeah Belle Belle's an incredible dog. Um, we get, we I, I give her Wolf yeah Wolf. you know I try to feed her raw. <laughs> she's um, yeah. she's a wonderful little thing. Um, but yeah I think that that is his element of child. I mean that's yeah. about as far as commitment as Tommy's gonna get. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like we we saw in um, I believe episode uh, two oh seven where the threesome happens where I was like you know man I could even see a kid maybe or something like that. Right, right. And I'm like Tommy oh, yeah. you're drunk. <laughs> you know, I think I think yeah. a dog is about as far as he can get as a commitment. I don't even think that he thinks, boy, a dog can live for you know 15, 18 years, and uh, he's not thinking that far right, ahead. Right, right. He's just like, damn, she's sad. I'll get her a dog. Yeah. I saw this somewhere. It works. Hmm. <laughs> he lives for the moment for sure. Plus, I love dogs in real life. I have a dog. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ruby. Ruby. I love that dog. I'm like that dog is in that pen. Lori all loves the, the time. dog too. <laughs> So, Leela, let me ask you this about Angela. Um, she, like Tasha, very smart. I love that the women, um, you know, even pink shoes, just smart women. She are not smart. Not a great killer, one. but... But come on, she, was, was, she was doing the doggone great. thing for the most of the... She outsmarted a lot of people for yeah. season one. Um, the women on the show are not dummies. Um, so I wonder how Angela rationalizes... Um, 
not only having an affair with Jamie, who's right. married with kids, but now that she knows that he's ghost. I know. Um, how, like, take us inside her mind, like what we don't see and what we don't know. How is she sleeping at night? Oh, it's so interesting. Season three, I specifically asked that she had insomnia. <laughs> that wasn't always written in. Um, here's the thing, is that we tend to think that rational thought and intellect will take us all the way through life, and the fact of the matter is it won't. It runs out. It, particularly when it comes to L-O-V-E in capital letters. And one of the wounds that I had to create in Angela is that when she left Jamie, the way she left Jamie at 14, that that massive love at that age had to terrify her to the point where she left and she never called him. And she fed herself with discipline, education, success, ambition, all of those things. And those are really great antidotes. Actually, our culture sells us that. If you got the good job, you got the house, you got the like raise, yeah. that you're gonna be happy. And the truth is, American culture is rife with loneliness and solitude and disconnection. So when Ghost comes back, that moment where they first meet, he is, the manifestations of all her hopes and dreams that she had for that boy at that age. And on top of it, he looks like this. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, let me stop you there, because since we're talking about the romance between, <laughs> yes. between uh, Ghost and Angela, let's look at a clip from season three <laughs> from oh. these two lovers. Yes. Oh, Angela's packing. <laughs> So, okay, mm. let's deal with some twists. Did you want to say something? I was just going to say saucy. <laughs> don't you love this We forget, guy? man. We forget. We look at those. Uh, we don't, you know, we're looking at that stuff with yeah. you guys for the, we haven't remembered it. Oh, really? It's been yeah, a long time. Yeah, we forget. Because you all have wrapped shooting all of this. We wrapped right? the uh, end of February, so yeah. we're hanging out for a while before that. Can we, because when I, I saw this scene before and... Lila, that leather jacket, and it just makes me think of um, your stylist, Frank. Yes, Frank Fleming. Frank Fleming. If but you let me, shout out. Triple shout out. But also let me bring something to someone's yeah. attention. One of the things, one of the common things in power that you will start to see played out is in some ways that beautiful black and white sequence that you see the opening credits of the mirror images. Yeah. In some ways you see that reflected in our drama where whenever a character just tries to escape something, it's reflected back to them like a bizarre funhouse. If that scene, scene, scene seems familiar, is it's because it sort of copies the scene with Tasha and Ghost frame for frame yeah, when they does. first enter truth in season one. And so that begs the question, how can you really leave your past behind if you're treading the same ground? Yes. Mm, mm, mm. Just That's deep. to That's very deep. Deep. point you in another direction. <laughs> That's deep. Okay. Um, so, Notori, you alluded to something earlier about um, where Tasha could be going in season three. You know, yes. you talked about how smart she is. Um, and I, I want to ask you a question about if we could see, if not in season three, maybe in season four or five or six. Um, yes, God willing. With yes, fans yes. like you all. Thank you. <laughs> If we we'll could go the see, distance. if we could see Tasha becoming a major player in the drug game, think on that, and let's look at this clip of Tasha okay. and Tommy. That seems I mean, so final. Shade. Goodbye, Tasha. Oh that boy. Was shade. <laughs> but is it? So, uh, uh. so tell us, could we see Tasha rise to be a kingpin in the game? Of course. Oh, Jesus, that's interesting. I mean, I think Courtney Kemp, our showrunner and writer, has always said to me, Tasha has the potential to do many things. She's a lot stronger than I think people might initially assume. They might think she's just the wife of Ghost. She likes the money, the clothes, dressed in, you know, Tom Ford from head to toe. But she's also a mathematician. She's really smart. She knows how to funnel the money so that we don't, you know, bring attention to ourselves, which you'll see in season three, uh, Tasha and Tommy utilize the street smarts mixed with Tasha's book smarts. So I do, th I do think that Tasha could be, you know, uh, I think a leader in the game. Uh, she's learned a lot from this man, from Ghost. You know, because she was a lot younger when she married Ghost and got married and had kids. And I think Tasha learned all the ins and outs. You know, season one, episode two, I think there's a dinner scene where she's like telling Ghost, you know, why don't you do what we did back in the day? 
chop shop, you know, cut up that body and split it up. And he listens to her. The one thing that Tasha loves about their relationship is the partnership. And she always had ideas of how to be a criminal. <laughs> she is a criminal mind. She is a smart woman. She is one that is not easy to break. So if the feds come, if somebody, you know, I think what you, all the elements that are needed to be a, a leader or a kingpin or a boss, Tasha has a lot of those elements and I'm just grateful to the writers to give her, I mean, what kind of woman would say in the car to ghost, keep fucking that bitch until I tell right. you to stop. <laughs> I'm just saying, I'm not as strong as Tasha. I don't know if I could sacrifice, you know, my husband and my family, but it's all to protect the children, to protect the unit, to protect the, the empire that they've built. So I think essentially Tasha has all the elements and the writers have put it on a page and I can't wait to explore that in seasons to come. Mm, 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 good stuff. Okay, so let's go behind the scenes. Um, you guys have mentioned um, the name Courtney. Courtney Camp, the creator of the show, showrunner, and the show is executive produced by uh, 50, 50 Cent. Cent yeah. I know she came up with it, and then they had the same agents, and um, so they ended up putting the two of them together. 50 came up with the idea and the concept. Mark Canton hooked yeah, up. Yeah, shout out to Mark Canton. Mark Canton, our One executive our producer, producer, hooked up. Uh, 50 with, with Courtney, Courtney, and she was uh, on The Good Wife, and she, you know she's phenomenally talented, she and Mark really recognized that and thought that they would be a good pair, and he was right. And oh, so it was originally 50's idea. Correct. Oh, it's, yeah, yeah this the vision is, is based on a lot Courtney. of things that have happened in his no, life. No, she yeah, expound, I knew that. She expound on what he, what he had she in his mind. She just wrote it. She okay. kind of brought in the Because I was going to say, what does Courtney know about these streets? Uh, I know. I think she went to Brown. She went to Brown. Right. What you know about those streets? Connecticut that ain't seeing the streets She merged like the bespoke suits and the businessman of ghosts. She merged that with the history of coming from the streets. They're, they're, the marriage of that was perfect. It's genius. They're yeah, it great, great together. Great. Well, I'm glad. I'm glad to know that that's how it came together. But let me ask you guys this about Courtney because it's amazing to see um, a black woman, you know, doing what she's doing in the game. And I wonder what it, what it's like to work with her as a as a showrunner. Um, it's amazing. That's awesome. I well, Jackie, I Taurus women because I like for her name to be a household name. Like I that. came. Yes, you all need to know <laughs> her. When, I, when that. I came to the meeting, the first initial meeting before um, my castmates were brought on, these three. Um, I did a Trayvon PSA after Zimmerman was pronounced innocent. Um, I lost my mind, went crazy, and did a PSA. So I was at that place, space. To Joe's point, I was a huge fan of dogs and had to, had to put one to sleep that day. So I, I didn't go to the, the meeting. I was supposed to meet for power. I didn't go. Um, and I don't know if it had a lot to do with just where I was emotionally um, or whether I wondered if, if Curtis, who had everything he had touched was that of Midas, but I didn't necessarily know if he was, or he wasn't proven in premium cable television. I didn't want to be on TV anymore for two seasons and be done. And I had enough film work going, so, and I had options, so I went away and then I came back. They said, you'll be meeting with a Courtney Kemp, uh, uh, Agbo at the time, obviously gender neutral, but my spirit said it was a woman. And I found out that it was a black woman. And so I met with her, and within 10 minutes, um, I was ashamed that I didn't know who she was. I was very upset with myself. And so what it's been like is it's been very empowering because you're dealing with someone that is your peer, someone that is a colleague, someone that is a friend, and become a sister in many ways. And I think that you know Joe, Lila, and Natori would speak the same way about working with her, and Curtis included. We're all not that dissimilar in terms of the generation that we were raised in. And so it's great to be able to talk to somebody not 50 or 60 years of age, but close to your age, close to, in terms of us as the actors, and to be as bright as she is. She's nerdy, which is perfect for us. She's street enough. She's strong enough. It's three Taurus women, including her. These two to my left are both Taurus as well. Yeah, Taurus power. So, um, running hey. things. So it's hey. been just pretty much awesome. And she, she collaborates. She allows us to She's collaborate, awesome. give ideas. And she thought that we should bring in a Spanish dialect coach. Um, both of them are here. Yes. Candido Shout Tirado. Carmen Rivera and, and yeah. Candido oh Tirado. Shout so, out to them. Hi, welcome. You know, for them, for example, she thought, you know, I think Ghost should speak Spanish. 
Omari knew enough of it, so she said, let's, let's go with that. Leela's character taught you, let's go with that, but not just Spanish, New Eurekan. And so those two were brought in. And so she's constantly trying to figure out the greatest truth possible to bring, as you guys have, or as you've said, Jackie, possibly seven years of a, of a dope-ass show that we haven't necessarily seen. It's a Shakespearean tragedy to the urbanite backdrop of New York City. Yeah. You know what else is really, yeah, that's amazing. Give it up, because that's real. I just have to say, just because, you know, for me, Courtney has been like a big sister. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm one of the, I guess, the younger people in the cast, let's say. And I feel like when I first started Power, I really gr am growing up with this show. And I had my 30th birthday when Tasha was having her 30th birthday <laughs> on the show when Lakeisha, played by Lala Anthony, has me sing a song, which I wind up singing in truth to, to Ghost. I think that Courtney allows us to grow, not just as actors and actresses, but as people. Mm. One thing I appreciate about working with her, to your question, is that I feel like... She's a showrunner that really, really cares about you. Mm. And most showrunners and the shows that I've done or the little experience that I've had, you know, it's, it's a hustle. Everybody's just trying to make the network happy, make the you know, producers happy, get the money, get the ratings. But aside from all of that, it's really, Courtney will come up and give you like a massage when she knows like your neck is hurting. Cause I, ha I hold a lot of tension in my neck. <laughs> If and, anybody's you know, interested. If anybody. <laughs> but I know this sounds really You're gonna weird. You're going to get all sorts of people just walking up to you. I know, just like, I heard you need a massage. <laughs> and I'm like, thank you. Um, but, <laughs> but I appreciate that she's a kind of woman. And also me being a black woman who's young and up and coming and being on a show that's lasting and successful, she really encourages me because I aspire to really inspire the next generation and right. I think that's what she's doing and she's going to continue to do and I'm glad that the world is finally seeing what we've seen since season one so I'm really proud of her special lady yeah she definitely is so all right so now it is time for your questions how do you and this is for all four how do you guys prepare for uh your characters like do you take the time to really you know go into a private sanctuary like how do you you know, go into getting into your characters before, before you begin. Yeah, Joe and Omari have good stories. Well, in terms of character development, sometimes Omari and I kind of revisit the actual streets. We usually take a trip down to uh, Southside Jamaica, um, uh, do a little bit hang, hanging out. out, you know. Make a Queens little, in the building? You know. Hi. Get a little Hi. Food, I see you. A little hanging out. <laughs> Check out the corner. Be on the lookout. Um, and, and then also, like, what I do before, like, just a typical day, if it's, you know, the, you have to keep the character as close as you need to keep the character. You know, if you, if you have to be in character, that, that's what you need to do, man. And you need to ex respect anybody else's process of them doing that for as much as they need to. I mean, I'm, I'm, you know, I have elements of Tommy in me, but I'm not, certainly not Tommy. I watch right. on screen sometimes. So I, get, I get scared. I'm like, that guy's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> so, but, so I need to keep the character as close to me as I need him for the day. Right. You know, so that's what I do. Um, should we be expecting anyone new to the cast? And then, will there be a Ghost Junior? That's an awesome question. Um, first of all, how, he does how, have how, a son. how old are you, brother? Tariq. 16. That's awesome, man. God bless you. I'm looking at you, and it, it's hard Why to not we? get emotional because I see you, and I see, I see young brothers that are fucking dealing with shit. So it's... It's really hard for me not to. So first of all, you're a beautiful young black man and you should hear that from me, okay? Um, I think it's impossible for us not to see elements in Junior that are ghost-like. Um, I had a director once and he's one of our four, I would speak for all, all four of us. Um, it was Michael Bassett, guys. And he's one of our favorite directors. He's from England. But he had a concept one day when we were working. And uh, he said, his kids don't know Ghost. And I said, absolutely they know Ghost. Because a man still comes home as a man. And the man is who the man is. And so he's Ghost. So in his construct, he's perhaps lived a life as this British man who is a director, brilliant director, who's been able to leave certain things from coming home. 
But what I know as a father in real life is my kids deal at times with Omari's temper. They deal with things I don't necessarily want them to see. And they're three years old and 16 months. So there's impossibilities to not seeing elements of Junior having ghost-like qualities, which is why Notorious Tasha and Omari's ghost are trying so hard to make sure that they don't exactly. necessarily ever have to live that life, if that answers your question. Do you think Dre question. is going to be um, a ghost Junior, Omari? Mm. That's an awesome question. Dre is played by Rotimi Akinosho, very Shout talented out to actor. Rotimi. And uh, phenomenal. His character is also a father. And I think that, yeah. I think that he is. What makes his character so interesting, Joe, is that he's living between the influence of your character, the influence of my character, and the influence, mm. in a ghost-like way, of the possible Kanan character. And so it's so hard to know where what makes Rotimi's character so dope is it's impossible to know maybe where he's going to go. I think he has elements of ghost in him, too. Um, but I definitely yeah, I feel like see. ghost doesn't feel as guilty about where he goes, but he feels absolutely guilty, young brother, about where his son, who's about your age. Michael Rainey Jr. is about your age. So my, co my question is for you, Amari. Um, there was a lot of talk before the show started about Basically, the person that would play Ghost would have been 50 Cent. And if that was, would have been the case, who would you have played? Uh, Tommy, no. Uh, <laughs> He's only Ghost. I was, I was never not playing. You know, um, Curtis started out when he had the vision that Joe spoke to Jackie about him having, that it was the inception was Curtis, and then Courtney came in and built upon it. He, he thought about himself in that. She says that Ghost is an amalgamation of parts of Curtis 50 Cent Jackson, parts of her father, and, you know, again, uh, elements of whatever Omari, Joe, and Courtney have created goes to be. So the schedule the is guy. way too nuts for, for Curtis, who probably the only reason he's not here talking to you guys because he's on another plane right now. I'm 18 hours on set, um, on the average 14 hours, but on long days, 18 hours. So that's a... That's a grueling schedule, and the character is a lot to balance and juggle. So if I came on, bro, I was always going to be Ghost. He is the only Ghost. Didn't they have yeah. you in mind for Ghost a long time ago? Like when they first started planning this, they thought of you, right? Kurt, Curtis said when he saw uh, Shavu in Next Day Air in 2007, he said, that's, that's my Ghost. And, and that's Courtney felt the same way. So it's a long time. Thank you, Jackie. Who, uh, you just threw me alive, Jackie. What's your favorite food? And the truth, do you know how to cook, each and every one of y'all? Okay, I'll start with this. Yes, I know how to cook. And my favorite food is a perfectly cooked corn tortilla over the flame with avocado and salt. Yummy. Mm. Expensive. That's good. I do a little something, something. You know, I'm not a she chef. To. <laughs> but I can make homemade cornbread. And I can make and a good bomb ass chicken wings. wings. Yes, and barbecue wings, which is my favorite food. I love barbecue chicken. <laughs> so I can make some barbecue chicken. Come on over. That I can do. She sounded like she was in the cafeteria, right? <laughs> oh, we Come got on, a barbecue. I can, I can cook. I'm a good cook. Um, I can attest to that, too. Oh, Joe, yeah. I'm a great cook. And I, uh, my favorite food is, is probably my mother-in-law's pierogi. Oh, mm -hmm. that's awesome. Yours are pretty good, too. Yeah, Omar, no, I'm trying to get off the question. I, I can survive in the kitchen. Um, <laughs> survive. My, I'm no. not, you know, that's not one of my greatest gifts. You can gifts, boil water. I'm good, I know, right? Um, but I think what I typically make, the one meal that I've consistently he eats made apples. Is, and that's it. Thank you guys for coming out. <laughs> it's real. Do you by any chance feel that um, Ghost pretty much replaced you with Angie? In some capacities, yeah. I mean, but I, there's also I mean, the obvious male-female element. But to me, the bigger question is that he replaced my sister with Angie. Yes, I was about to go and to that. And that, so I think that's the, really the hardest part He always part has my it. back. That's why I keep him close. This is my guy. So I, Thank you. Because, okay. like, me as a fan, like, I'm sitting here and I'm like, wow. I'm like, he really, like, just dug up the past and he's just going for it. You well, know? I say it in episode one. Why you want to go sniff around some pussy from high school? I know. <laughs> That's one of the lines. Yes. What's your, se what's your and next? And for you, um, who? Uh, um, Notori. Okay. How do you feel seeing the relationship that Ghost has with Angie due to the fact that? 
you guys have gone through so much stuff together. Like there's things that you guys probably don't even show on the air, but you leave it to our imaginations that you guys have gone through. How do you feel seeing them together and knowing that he took her to Miami and he took her to the club and Girl, all this I feel stuff. the same way you feeling right now. <laughs> I can she tell is. you're getting upset as you ask yeah. the question. She is committed. I mean, it's obvious. Tasha <laughs> has been, she birthed three children for this man. You know, she has been there for him when he didn't have much as a, you know, on the corners, on the street corners, and now he's a big time boss. She's been a part of the hustle, so I think Tasha's just as pissed as every single one of y'all up in here. Thank you for your question. Last one. Ghost, this question is for you, uh, Omari. A lot of, I relate to the show a lot because a lot of your life relates to my life or what I'm going through right now. If you had a choice, who would you be? Ghost or Jamie, and why? Mm, Jamie. You better give him a good answer. If this is your real life right now? Wow. <laughs> we, we better answer. Somebody put him in the front row, and I'm sorry oh if I did anything. <laughs> I feel pressure. I, I don't, I feel like, um, Chris Albrecht, Star's executive, uh, or president at this point, CEO but now president, he came in saying, I want to make sure that Omari can bring Jamie to the role, right? Um, but ironically, what I knew is that Curtis and Courtney hired me for the ability to play Ghost. Ghost to James. James isn't talked about a lot. Leela brought it up. But the three-headed monster includes James. And James is the entrepreneurial dreamer. James sees that. They talk about Jamie being a dreamer. I don't necessarily think of Jamie as the dreamer. I think of Jamie as just a, a, a kid who's so optimistic about the world that he came from that includes the life of what he negotiated with Tommy, which is drug distribution, before he met Tasha. But it mostly is about a girl that lived across the street named Angela. Jamie, because of that, and him still being 14 years old, even as a 30-year-old character as Ghost, the Jamie part makes him a kid. His level of arrogance, selfishness, and the likes to me have often made me as the actor playing it go, that's why I'm confused when I go to my brother of Joe and say, yo, I'm confused because Ghost is easier to play in the reality that Omari has lived a life of growing up in the urban setting of Decatur, very much being from the street, having family members that dealt drugs, but very educated, really deep, really smart, but also very street. So those are the parts of Omari that I was able to bring to the character and it's most brought to Ghost, not Jamie. So I would say at the end of the day, I wouldn't have even voted for President Obama if I didn't sense his ghost inside of him. The Jamie part of him is not something that I would be as interested in in sitting down and being about. I might talk to Jamie, but I wouldn't want to really go have a beer with, with Jamie. If that answers your question. Yeah, I hope that we put him Get on the, the right Get out the game, stay alive. I, I was like, I hope we put you on the right track. Go ahead and be James, that entrepreneurial businessman that he's talking about. Go ahead and be him. Is it true that Anika Noni Rose is joining the cast? Yes. Yeah. So that was, uh, you Anika. say Chris? Was it Chris? Chris. Chris, yeah. I, I remember names. So Chris asked about that. Yes, Anika Noni Rose, who, do you know Anika Noni Rose as a 16-year-old young man? She's going to be awesome this year. She is an incredible stage actress and film actress. She was in For Color Girls with me, Jackie. And she's been she's on Broadway. Super, she's won a Tony. She's fantastic. <laughs> 13 years as an actor, guys. I didn't start yesterday. <laughs> I heard no, they were making the connection. But oftentimes people forget I was in for Color Girls. So no, 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 no. They remember. Okay, thank you. No. She's thank like, you. uh, 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 She's like, uh, 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 not me. Who, who will Anika play? I love that. I, I, Anika I, I enjoyed that movie so much, probably because Anika was in it. And we bonded so much on that set. And uh, You're going to have to wait and see who she plays. Yeah, she's, we can't give too much. Show. Come on, Joe. Very who else, who else is in it? Did we we get got anybody so else many great people. Year? I mean, Anika is a special, I Calvin think one Mul of the special. Cal, Cal Mulvey. Cal Mulvey is in it. Cal, Callan uh, Mulvey is in it. Who else? She's not in Power this year. Who? Janet. We, are we talking I was about like, yeah. Janet Jackson? Where do you this think is you a are? Power I don't hear about that. This panel is I didn't about get the power. memo. Says, Screw Qatar. I'm going back to being power. I was like, yes. But Anika plays a very strong and interesting, pivotal no. character connected to Kanan's so story. She's so good at okay. it this year, So guys. we're excited for that. So she's a surprise. I'm glad that you watched For Color Girls. I really, I yeah. enjoyed that movie. Nice. nice. Thank nice. you. Give it up. Give it up. God bless you for that.
Okay, guys. Jackie, did you I have anything, a last well, you know, I could, I could go on and on and on, and I know you guys could, too, but I'm sure you all want to give another round guys. of applause to this wonderful yeah. cast here of Power. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you, you all. You guys have made us the number one show on Stars, so we appreciate you. We applaud you. And thank you, Apple. Thank you, Apple. Seriously. Thank, thank you, you, Jackie. Yes, thank you for having me. You did a hell of a job.